Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to another midweek mini message. We've been looking at the book of Ezra and we're over halfway. We're into the second part of chapter five. And today we're going to finish chapter five. So if you have your your Bible with you, you can turn there now. Uh, What we're going to see here is a letter that Tatanai wrote to King Darius. Okay, so let's read this together and see what it says. Starting at verse six, I'm reading from the ESV and it says this. This is a copy of the letter that Tatanai, the governor of the province beyond the river, and Shethabozanai and his associates, the governors who were in the province beyond the river, sent to Darius the king. They sent him a report in which was written as follows. To Darius the king, all peace. Be it known to the king that we went to the province of Judah, to the house of the great God. It is being built with huge stones and timber is laid in the walls. This work goes on diligently and prospers in their hands. Then we asked those elders and spoke to them thus, who gave you a decree to build this house and to finish this structure? We also asked them their names for your information that we might write down the names of their leaders. And this was their reply to us. We are servants of the God of heaven and earth. And we are rebuilding the house that was built many years ago, which a, a great king of Israel built and finished. But because our fathers had angered the God of heaven, He gave them into the hands of Nebuchadnezzar, uh, king of Babylon, the Chaldean, who destroyed this house and carried away the people to Babylonia. However, in the first year of Cyrus, king of Babylon, Cyrus the king made a decree that this house of God should be rebuilt. And the gold and silver vessels of the house of God, which Nebuchadnezzar had taken out of the temple that was in Jerusalem and brought into the temple of Babylon, These Cyrus the king took out of the temple of Babylon and they were delivered to the one whose name was Sheshbazar, whom he had made governor. And he said to him, take these vessels, go and put them in the temple that is in Jerusalem and let the house of God be rebuilt on its site. Then this Sheshbazar came and laid the foundations of the house of God that is in Jerusalem. And from that time until now, it has been in building and it is not yet finished. Therefore, if it seems good to the king, let search be made in the royal archives there in Babylon to see whether a decree was issued by Cyrus the king for the rebuilding of this house and God in Jerusalem. And let the king send us his pleasure in this matter. So there's essentially a recap of the story so far. Tatanai, the governor, is, you know, he's questioning what's going on. We've seen a lot of persecution kind of in the previous uh, years, when you know, 15 years beforehand, and they've started building again. And Tatanai, the governor from beyond the river, is saying, "Hey, what are you? What are you doing? What are you doing here?" And we see as the the, the people of God respond, they they do a few things that I, I think are really worth noticing for us as they recap this story. The the first thing is that they they responded honestly. You know, they they didn't sugarcoat uh, any of the issues going on. Look at look at verse 12 here. Uh, let me just find it. But because our fathers had angered the God of heaven, he gave them into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar. So, so they're willing to, to recognize some of their mistakes. But then even just before that, in verse 11, it says, We are the servants of God. Uh, we are the servants of the God of heaven and earth. And, and you know, their whole thing is framed in bringing glory to God. Uh, so just a, a quick, short devotional today, I think, just to, to draw our attention to those two responses as they retell the story. We don't need to go back into that story today, but as they retell the, the journey they'd been on so far, they were, they were honest in, in where they had failed, where their people had failed and where they had let their God down. And they were, they were bringing God glory in all that they they did. Everything was framed about bringing glory to God. And I think we can learn from that as the church, as the global church, but as Trinity Church as well. We need to be, we need to be honest about where we get stuff wrong, where we miss the mark. Um, and we need to be honest about the challenges of, of the church in today's world. I, I truly believe that we're in a, a time where the church as we know it is, is changing ever so slightly. Not completely, but it's, it's just redirecting again. Uh, and we can talk about that another time. But I think the big thing is we need to be honest about when we we miss the mark there. But also uh, we can we can make sure that everything we do brings glory to God. Everything we say, we can say it in such a way that brings glory to God. We live in these weird times where maybe uh, governments don't align with what we would want them to to do as the church. Now we have two responses there. We can 
We can protest, and we can be uh, angry, or we can strive to bring God glory in all that we do. And now, that, don't get me wrong, you can disagree with something and do it in a way that still brings glory to God. But we, we, it's so easy when we get angry or frustrated to say something in such a way that doesn't bring God honor. And I know that in my life, that's a real challenge. So let's, let's take that quick lesson from, from Ezra today. You know, let's strive like those people of God did to be honest about our shortcomings, honest where we've missed the mark, because uh, that helps us to shape where the church goes in the future. And let's, let's make sure that everything we say, uh, it says in 1 Corinthians, where is it? 1 Corinthians 10, 30, it says, so whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it for the glory of God. Let's be people who, in whatever we do, we strive to bring glory for God, uh, to God, I should say. Uh, that's the kind of church I want to be a part of. And I wouldn't be surprised if that's the kind of church you want to be a part of too. So that's all I have to say today. I hope you have an amazing week. I'm just going to pray and then we'll see you on Sunday. Uh, Lord, we thank you that you are with us, that you are guiding us, that you are speaking to us. Lord, that your heart is for us. That you are almighty and wonderful and good. Uh, Lord, would you help us to bring you glory in all that we say and do, whether we eat or drink or whatever we do, would we bring you glory? And Lord, would you help us to be honest about the times where we miss the mark, where we fall short of perhaps what you've called us to? Help us to, to be open and contrite and to, to help us then, therefore, to strive towards the church that you're calling us to, the church that you have uh, called the Bride of Christ. Lord, we, we want to be glorifying to you. So would you use us this week? Uh, would you uh, continue to speak to us? And Lord, would we bring you glory? In your mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Have a great week, everyone.